My name is Terry Johnson, and I'd like to welcome you to the Mayor Johnson Company and the Boardmaker video. The purpose of the Boardmaker video is to get you off to a quick and successful start using your Boardmaker program. There's a manual that came with the Boardmaker video that gives greater detail. Consult it if you need extra help. I'd like to let you know that it's okay to copy the video. To start off, I'd like to show you some samples of items that you can make with your Boardmaker program. These are some examples of overlays that we made in our office. This was designed by some people at Unicorn Engineering basically as a food board. You can see you can make it in two sizes. Actually, all, to do, all you have to do to change sizes is to change the printing percentage when you do the overlay. The overlay in the back is for a Unicorn board. And the smaller one could be used for whatever you like. It was printed with a 550C Hewlett Packard printer, color printer. You could print this in black and white and use magic markers to add the colors if you wish to do that. This is a black and white overlay that was printed on a laser writer. It's inside a sheet protector. A lot of our materials are put inside binders or folders or whatever for protection. You can also make overlays that fit inside some of the carrying devices that we have, like the mid-size wallet. This is an example of an overlay that uses a floating cell. If this were put on a speech output device, for example, you'd have some cells where you might touch banana, for example, and would say, this is a banana. The floating cell looks nice. Basically, it's just the same overlay, and we're done, well, we did it with rounded corners and left a gray shading in between. This is the same overlay printed at two different percentages. Here's an example of a task analysis kit that came from our life experiences kit. The task involved is making a, a lunch meat sandwich. You can see the steps that go down, one through nine, and broken down into tasks. This is an example of a board maker overlay that you could make. If you did this on a dot matrix printer, you could just cut it off at the bottom. Some of the workshops, for example, would make boards like this for washing dishes and put it over by the sink, and so on. Bingo games are also in our catalog. You can see that a bingo game would be very easy to make. Set up your bingo card, hold up one card, maybe a little bit larger for, for everyone to see, use bingo markers. Or if we wanted to use this for lotto, we could make two copies of this card and cut the second copy apart and put the apron on top of the apron so you can make games. The books that are made in our office are done with Boardmaker and a desktop publishing program. You can import pictures from Boardmaker into other programs through the Windows clipboard. The idea is that you set up Boardmaker on one part of the screen, the desktop publishing program on the other part of the screen, and copy and paste using the Windows clipboard to transfer the pictures. It's very quick. You'll need to check and see which desktop publishing programs use the Windows clipboard. To install your Windows program, open Windows and find your program manager. You'll have to look at your Windows instructions for some of the information. Typically, you find the drive that Windows on is type WIN and then hit return to open Windows. When Windows is open, find the program manager and double click on it if it's not already open. It should look like this. Then go to the file menu, click on it and select run. Once you've selected Run, insert the disk that you want to install, the Boardmaker number one disk, and on the command line, on my particular computer, it's installed in drive A, so I'm going to put in A. Uh, the, it's a three and a half inch drive. It, it is B on some machines. You'll just have to figure out which one it is. Put in a colon after the A, and then a backslash, and then type the word install. When you get it all in, then just go ahead and click on OK. What we're asking it to do right now is to run the install program, which is on the disk that's in drive A. The first screen that comes up, Boardmaker installation screen, gives you the latest news in Boardmaker. If there are any problems or any things that are good or bad, will you put it in there before we release it? These are things that might have come up since we printed the manual. You can scroll down the side. You can see how I'm using the scroll bar to move through the text. After you've read it, just click on Continue. OK, this screen is asking, where do you want to install Boardmaker? 
And right now the default drive is drive number C. So you can see it says C colon backslash board maker. <clears throat> if you want to put it on your C drive, leave it that way. If you wanted to change it to your D drive or your E drive, I'm going to replace the C with an E because I've got several drives on here. So I'm going to put mine on the E drive. It says on the bottom that BoardMaker requires 13909 KB kilobytes of free space. Basically, that's 14 megabytes of space. Now, if you don't have that on your drive, it won't fit. If you do a full install, that'll install all the parts of BoardMaker. We're going to click on the custom install right now, and I'll show you what the parts of BoardMaker are. So the way it sits right now, we would be installing BoardMaker on the E drive. Okay, having clicked on custom install, these are the parts of BoardMaker, and this tells the size of each part. If I click on the BoardMaker application, you can see it puts a little check in the corner. Also tells us that it's 236K large, and that the total space required so far is 230, 239, it says. If you want to install the black and white symbols, click on that. If you want to install the pre-made or predefined grids, click on that. Right now, the total disk space required is 5948, about 6 megabytes. If we select the color symbols as well, uh, you can see it bumped that up to about 14 megabytes, a little over 13875. To go ahead and install it at this point, just click on Continue. That'll do the installation. Clicking on Continue will cause the board maker to start installing. The time of installation will vary on different computers. Typically, it'll take about 15 minutes. You'll need to keep feeding disks in as it asks for new disks and put them in. When the installation is finished, it asks you, uh, basically, it'll set up BoardMaker in a set of icons in a program manager group that'll appear on your Windows screen. And it wants to know if you want to place the, uh, the, the group of BoardMaker icons in its own file called BoardMaker, or did you want to put it in with other things? Typically, you want to leave it on its own so you can find it quickly. So we would just click on Create. The installation is complete. The application has properly been set up. Just click OK, and you should be all set to go. Installation is finished. We also wanted to give you a few of the Windows basics and some of the shortcuts. Each configuration on Windows is different. So on your computer, find your program manager. And this one, I'll double click on it to open it. Should look something like this. And BoardMaker will be an active icon in it. And I'll open BoardMaker. In order to drag that screen down, you can see the blue bar up on top of BoardMaker. If I put the pointer on it and I hold the mouse button down, I can drag it to reposition the window. I'll put a little cell on here just to give you an idea of how you can use the scrolling features. You can see the scroll bar, which is vertical on this side. If I click on the pointer to bring it back very quickly, just click in the open area ahead of it. And the same works for the horizontal. Other things that are handy if you want to resize the window, if you notice the cursor is turned to a double arrow now, which will al allow you to make the window bigger. So you can fit it to your screen size. Also, there's a Maximize button up in this corner. If you click on the Maximize button, BoardMaker will fill your screen. This is a very nice setting. It'll allow you to see more of what you're working on. So it's a good idea when you first open BoardMaker to click on that Maximize button. There are other features that Windows does have. And you'll just need to go to your Windows guide to find out some other shortcuts. I'd like to talk a little bit about keyboard equivalents. The keyboard equivalents that are very common in Windows are to help you with pull-down menus. If, for example, we wanted to select a command out of the view up here, we could hold the mouse on view and go down and select whatever it is that we want to do. Show grid, for example. Let up on the mouse, and it'll show the grid. You can tell by the check on the side that show grid is selected. If I select that again, it'll take that away. Now, when I do some of the commands, there are keyboard equivalents for them. Right now, the view is also dealing with the size of the screen. So we've got double size, actual size, half size. And if you look over to the right, there's a little patch over here that says Control plus 2, Control 1, Control 4 for double size. What this means is, if you don't want to go up to the window, if you hold down the Control key and press the number 1 while you're holding the Control key down, it will automatically do that actual size command and change the size of the window. So the commands that have these on the side are keyboard equivalent commands. 
Typically, the keys we use with the keyboard equivalent shortcut are the Control key and the Alt key. We use these keys in combination with another key to perform an action. The keyboard equivalent for Quit the Program in BoardMaker is Control Q. In this case, you would press down the Control key and hold it down and press Q. Other keyboard equivalents work in the same fashion. Now, there's a second type of keyboard equivalent that's also prevalent in Windows. If, for example, we wanted to go to the uh, Preferences file, instead of using the direct keyboard command, I can use the Alt key. <clears throat> if I press down the Alt key and I take the letter that's underlined, which is P in this case, so while holding down the Alt key, I press P, the menu comes up on its own. And that's all done with the keyboard. Now, if I want to make one of these choices, all I have to do is take the first letter that sits up there and press it. Now, if I go down, you can see board size, the letter B is underlined. I'm going to press B on the keyboard, and I'll get the menu for board size. Typically, when you've got a menu up like this, you can see the OK button has got a little black area around it. It's a little bit highlighted, a little darker than the rest. If I hit the Enter key or the Return key, that will select OK. So once again, that shortcut for the menus is, let's say we wanted to do View this time, I would do Alt-V. If you see the, the V is underlined under View, so I'll do Alt-V, and then I can pick the menu, for example, Show Grid. You can see if you look at that one, it shows it as a G, so I'll press G, and that'll show that grid. I'll bring that back, I'll do an Alt-V, and I can deselect Show Grid by pressing G again. Those are the keyboard equivalents. In getting familiar with BoardMaker, the first thing we want to do is learn how to draw a cell. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on BoardMaker, the, uh, the group, and then I'm going to open the BoardMaker color program. As it opens, you can see the registered user is Paul Peake of the Mayor Johnson Company. Uh, when BoardMaker is on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Maximize button, which will make the window a full BoardMaker screen. The portion of BoardMaker that opens first is the drawing portion. There are two parts to BoardMaker. There's a symbol finding portion and a drawing portion. And this is the drawing portion where we go ahead and make the grids. To make a grid, the first thing we'll want to do is draw a single cell. And before we draw the cell, we'll go ahead and go up to view here and show some rulers so we'll know what size we're going to make that cell. Under the view menu, we'll select show rulers. And you get rulers that come up. Now to draw the cell, Click on the drawing, cell drawing tool, move the pointer into the drawing area, hold down the mouse button and drag. As you drag it out, you'll be drawing a cell. This particular one that I'll draw will be two by two. And if you want to keep that perfectly square, you can hold the shift key down as you do the dragging, and it'll keep it square for you. When the cell is on the screen, if you'd like to move it around, put the pointer in the middle, push the mouse button down and drag, and it'll reposition it for you. If you want to change the size, you can go ahead. There's a little grow box down in the corner down here that you can see when the cell is selected, that grow box appears. You can change the size by dragging the grow box. In order to multiply that cell, we use what's called a cell sprayer. If I click on the cell sprayer and I put the mouse on the cell and hold it down and drag, you can see how it will spray cells. Before we do this, though, let's reduce the page size so you can see better. So we'll go back up to view. And you can see our possibilities for page size. Here we have double size, actual size, half size. We're going to do reduce to fit, which will basically allow us so you can see the entire page. Clicking on the cell sprayer, then, we can go ahead and do the spraying of the cells. Naturally, you can make this any size you want. So we'll go ahead. All the cells are now selected. You can tell by the little grow box in the corner. I'll put the mouse in the center of any one of the cells, and I can center it on the page just by dragging. We're ready to bring in pictures now, so we'll go ahead and click on the symbol getter, which is the little face up in the corner. That flips us into the symbol finding portion of the, of the uh, program. You can see the symbol that's up here now is adjectives. We're going to ask it to find the word apple. So we'll type in the word apple down here. On the keyboard, it will show up. You can see the fine language is English. We're asking it to find apple anywhere. If we wanted to find apple in the beginning of a word, we would click here on begin word. Or if we wanted apple the whole word, which would bring up apple right away. That's one way of delineating the words. If you wanted the word for I, for example, for I, me, and you used whole word, you'd find it a lot faster than if you said I anywhere, which would give you every symbol that has a letter I in it. If we do anywhere on here, you can see underneath this, there's a find button. 
We've got a couple choices, first, previous, and next. Right now, the first has got a little dark outline around the outside of the first button. That indicates you can use the enter key or the return key and make that selection. So instead of clicking on it, for example, I can actually just hit the enter key and it will find first. The first word it found with apple anywhere in it is applesauce. That's not the word we wanted, so now we can go over to find next. Now you can see that find next has now got that dark shadow around it, so I can also hit the enter key and it will find next now. It's already shifted over because it knows we want to find the next symbol. So now because we had apple anywhere, we got apple sauce, went from applesauce to apple juice to pineapple juice because pineapple has the word apple in it and we'll hit enter again, which brings us to apple. That's one way to find symbols. Another way is to, is to uh, look through the libraries. If you follow the mouse pointer down in the bottom, there's a little arrow down here. If I click on the little arrow, we're in a food library, fruit library, so we can actually flip through these symbols one symbol at a time. I can also go backwards by clicking the reverse on that. The double arrows are a complete library change. So if we click the double arrow to the right, we go to the next library, which is leisure. And the double arrow back will bring us back to the last symbol in this library, which was zucchini. So I'll click it again and go to Wendy and go forward to the next library. And we'll go back to Apple here by asking it to find first applesauce. That's how you can move around in the libraries. To go ahead and make a copy of that picture now, we want to put it on the drawing portion. I could click on copy, which would put a copy on the clipboard, or I can click on the draw button. Now the draw button does two things. The draw button copies the picture and it also flips us back into the draw mode. So this is much faster. So we'll go ahead and click on the draw button. That puts us in the draw mode. Now, all we have to do to paste that picture is to click. Now you can see where the mouse pointer is on the cell. If I just click, it puts that picture in place. To go back and get the next symbol, we go back to the symbol getter. And I'll type in apricot. As you can see, you don't have to spell the entire word. We'll ask it to find first. Now, there are keyboard equivalents for copy and draw. You can see the D has got a small line underneath it here. If I do a control, excuse me, an Alt D, that will do the same as clicking on that draw button. So I'll move the mouse arrow away so you can see that if I do this with the keyboard, Alt D will copy the picture flip us back into the other screen, and all we have to do is click on the cell we'd like to put it in. Now there's also a keyboard equivalent to go back to the symbol finding portion. And that one, if you think of the word back, if I do an Alt B, and you might want to write these down, Alt B will bring you back into the symbol finding portion. So I'll press Alt B and that'll bring us back there. And we'll type in avocado. And Alt D will copy and bring us back over. Click on the cell. Alt B will bring us back to the symbol finder again. We'll bring in the word banana. And I'll click on draw. Click a cell. Back to the symbol finder. The next word then would be orange. Find first. Orange juice. Find next. Click on the draw button, click on the cell, go back to the symbol getter, pair, click on the draw button. I've sometimes I'm using keyboard equivalents and sometimes they're just basically using the mouse. Pineapple. Pineapple juice. Pineapple, click on draw. Position the picture. Strawberry. Strawberry shake. These pictures are automatically sizing to the cell because of what we call an auto resize. Under the preferences menu, there's a choice called auto resize. And you can see right now that it's on. When it's on, when you click on a cell, it will automatically size the cell, or size the picture to fit the cell, no matter what size picture you brought in. The auto resize command also limits you to one picture per cell. So if you want to put more than one picture per cell, you have to turn that off. Let's go ahead. I'm going to delete some of these cells. I'll click on the cell here, and you can see the little grow box in the corner shows it's selected. If you want to select more than one cell, if you hold the shift key down, it'll allow you to keep selecting cells, and then just hit the delete key and that will take them away. 
This cell can be enlarged by dragging in so we can mix sizes. And going back to the symbol getter, the last picture to bring in would be melon. We'll go back to the draw portion and do a click. And you can see how melon sizes to match that screen. I'm going to delete that picture of melon right now and go back to the symbol getter. But before I do, I'm going to turn off auto resize. And then I'll show you how this works so we can go ahead and try putting more than one picture in a cell. So now, by selecting auto resize, we've turned it off. There's no check by it now, so you can tell that it's off. Whoop. Go back into the symbol finder. And I'm going to hide the text on melon up here. You've got 10 different languages in BoardMaker that you can use. Line one is what we've got selected right now to show. If I hold this mouse down on this little pointer, you can see that the line one text could be any language. So we could select Spanish, for example, which happens to be melon also. Let's see what Norwegian is. Melon. <laughs> Great example. German is Maloney. We'll go to English here. Actually, what I want to do is hide the language totally. I'll just show you, though, while we've got it up here, that you can actually show two languages at a time if you like. So we can show English and German, or any other language you'd like in German. And now we've got the picture for Melon up here. When I copy it and paste it now into that cell, when it comes in, it comes in at whatever size BoardMaker had it set, because we didn't have auto resize turned on. That little picture of melon now can be manipulated. When you've got auto resize turned on, there's no capability of working within the cell itself. Basically, everything is done to the cell. So if you delete, it deletes the entire cell. If you turn auto resize off, then you can work on the object that's inside. So we could take this melon, for example, and make it bigger just by dragging it and moving it around. And we'll go back over to the symbol finder and we'll type in the word delicious. And find that. Whoops, our fine language is German. It turned to German because we went to line one in German. We want that to be English. The fine language is the language that you find the pictures in. You can basically find the pictures in any language that you want to. So if you speak Portuguese, for example, you can find pictures in Portuguese and make communication boards in any of the languages above without knowing the language. There's our picture for delicious, or word delicious, and there's the picture. You can see up here that we can actually change the picture size in BoardMaker itself as well. Right now, it's set at 100%. This little button allows you to do that. We can make that 200%, which would double the size of the picture right in BoardMaker before we bring it down. There's also an other button down the bottom down here that allows you to type in a percentage. So you could type in 300%, for example. Or you could make that 25% if you wanted to, which would be 100% is a two-inch picture. So 50% would be a one-inch picture and so on. That allows you to select other here. Let's bring this back to 100%, which is a two-inch picture. And we'll click on the draw portion. And we'll paste in delicious. You can see this is a rather large cell. We're working in a reduced size right now. So the pictures are opaque. So if you get one picture on top of another in color, it may block part of the other picture out. It depends on which one's on top. You're going to find this may be a problem at times when you're doing this. If you work in black and white, it's not a problem. If you'd like to put text in there as well now for delicious, let's just go over to the text tool and put a cursor in. And I'll type the word good. Oh, that's real tiny. So we're going to select all the text here and go up to text and font. And now we have the opportunity to change that text so we can make it much larger. Let's make it uh, 36 point. And then we can also make it bold. And we'll click OK. And you can see how the size of the text changed. To move that text, if I click on it with a cursor, it'll just give me a cursor inside the text block. We'll click up here on the pointer. And now you can reposition the text. Going to full size on the screen now would show you The size we're looking at is greatly reduced. We'll go back to reduce to fit just so I can show you how to put a background behind all these cells. To put in a background cell, we, we kind of call it a floating cell, which gives you some contrast between it looks very nice. To do that, we're going to draw a single cell over the entire overlay, and it'll cover it. So we're going to start just above the overlay to the left and slightly above it. 
with the cell tool selected and drag and basically we've got a white cell over the top of the entire overlay. We've got our color palette on the side here. I can just click a, I'll click on gray. And we also could click on any color we want to, and this is how you can change colors in cells. We'll go to gray. And now we'll send that to the back so it's not covering everything up. There's an example of an overlay that's done with the color background. This particular overlay now, we would really be ready to, uh, to go ahead and print it or save it. Let's go ahead and save it first. To save a file, go up to the File menu and select Save. We chose a save, which basically will keep the board as it is. If we had opened a grid that we'd already made and decided to put pictures in it like we will in the pre-made grid section, which is coming up, we probably would want to choose a save as instead of a save. The save as command basically allows you to make a second document. So for example, if this, we had drawn this fruit board blank with just blank cells in it, did a save, we'd have a blank grid. If we went ahead then and added the fruit to it and decided to call it fruit and did a save as, the save as would make a second board with the fruit on it and leave the original blank board the way it was. The file name is listed right here. The BKR suffix that's on here stands for board maker, telling the computer that it's a board maker file. The little star that's in front of the dot is telling us that basically it doesn't have a name. That star stands for any letter you want. It doesn't have any definition. To give this a name, we'll call it fruit, F-U-R-I-T. And I put that to the left of the dot. So right now our file is called fruit.bkr, standing for board maker. You can use up to seven letters in the label when you're doing a save. So if the name of the board, for example, were uh, microscope or something on that order, that would be too long. You'd have to abbreviate it. So we've named the file now. We need to tell it where we want to save it. This is the uh, C drive that this board maker is installed on if you follow the mouse pointer down. Inside that C, C drive, the directory is board maker, black and white color. We're going to go to My Grids because this is a grid that we made and open up My Grids by double clicking on it. And then when we click on OK, it will save the fruit display in My Grids. And you can see that the title has changed across the top now. It says board maker is in the C, C drive, board maker directory, in the My Grids directory, and it's called fruit. To print this screen, we would go back up to the file menu. And before printing it, we might want to look at print setup just to give you an idea of, of how this works. When the print setup screen comes up, your default sent, uh, printer is selected up here. It tells you which printer you're going to use. Yours will be different than ours. The orientation and this particular document is portrait, which means it's vertical. If I click on landscape, you can see how that little file will change sideways. Portrait meaning vertical 8.5 by 11. Landscape means 8.5 by 11 turned on its side. When you get the print set up to where you want it, just click on OK. And once you set this, typically most people don't change it too much. To actually print the document, then we'll go back up to the file menu, select print, and you want it to print all pages here, there's only one. So we would click OK at this point in time. The printing can take, time can vary. It may, may go up to a half an hour, it may go up to 10 minutes. It just depends on your particular printer and computer. What will happen though, the printing job will be buffered. There'll be a little pause. Eventually you get your pointer back. If you want to see how much time is left on your printing job, you want to go ahead and open your print manager. In order to do that, if you're not familiar with Windows, take a look at your Windows guide and find the print manager and that'll tell you what percentage of the job is printed or if there's other jobs ahead of it or whatever the printing status is. Printing will vary greatly from printer to printer. Sometimes it even depends on the drivers. The uh, Hewlett Packard 560C, for example, we found that will print differently with a Microsoft 
Windows driver than it will with the Hewlett Packard drivers. So if you're getting different colors, different things that come out on your printer, it's probably a, uh, peculiar to your particular printer setup. I'd like to show you some of the other features in BoardMaker. We'll draw a cell here, and we want to work with some color. When we go to get the symbol, we've got the picture for bicycle up here. Uh, bicycle is a black and white symbol, even in the color version. I want to put it on the draw layer here and select it and paste it in. When you first paste it in, if you want to change the, the color of the picture, you, while it's selected, you can tell by the little dot that's inside the cell. We can actually change the color of the picture and the text by clicking on the Make Bicycle Green, for example. If you wanted to select the text, it's a little hard once you get away from the initial selection. You may have to go into the letter key here, the alphabet, get a cursor, and then you can change your text color if you want to do that. So you can have a different color text, different color picture. I'll go back up to the pointer now. And if you want to change the cell background, this area in here, you'll have to select the cell itself. And then when you click in a color, it will click in the background for you. Now, if you want to make changes to the bicycle inside now, it's really kind of too late. We've got auto resize turned on. So if we turn auto resize off, then we can capture just the bicycle and we could make that portion of it, for example, black, make the text red, and the cell inside the color it is. The only thing that's really not apparent with the program, there are lines along the outside of the cell right now. If I click off the screen, you can see these, the line on the, the cell surrounding. If I click on the line tool, now I can actually change the color of that outside line so I could make that red also. So if you want to do anything to the outside of the lines on a cell, you'll need to use the line tool. Have that selected before you select a color. If you want to do the fill on the inside of a cell, then just click in the cell with the color that you want. One of the uh, unusual things that you can do with this, we'll move bicycle over here. Let me turn auto resize back on. It's possible to use a black background and paste in a white picture. So I'll get the cell multiplier here and we'll drag over a second picture. And this time, when that cell is selected, we'll select the color. Let me click off here because I've got both of them selected. We'll select the color black. Select the cell with black. And now go get that picture for bicycle again and flip into the draw mode. And now pasting it in, we get a white picture that comes in on the black picture. Some printers will print that white on black. Others will show it as a totally black cell. We found there are differences in printers, the way they handle color. Sometimes it doesn't quite print what's on the screen. Uh, other times it does. And it even gets down to the point to where the driver of the printer, for example, on the Hewlett Packard 560C, the uh, Microsoft driver that comes with Windows treats it differently than the driver that comes with the 550C. So if you're having problems with one of these effects, you might try switching print drivers. If you look at the color palette in the board maker, a standard VGA monitor will show the 16 colors that are in the upper, upper half. When you start using the colors that are in the lower half down below, if you follow the pointer, you may run into some problems as far as the way they display. The uh, printers may print those colors on the bottom half, but your monitor might not show them. So this is going to be, have to be something you're going to have to play with on your colors for your monitor. I'm going to do a select all here on the bicycles and delete them. So we'll just hit delete. And I'll put in a new cell. Now, with the cell, just to go through some of the commands, we'll go up to the Preference menu first. You can see the cell is still selected by the little box down in the corner. These are some of the choices. We have choices of line thickness, so we can go ahead and make that thicker or thinner. That also applies to any lines that you draw with the line tool, that line thickness. And it only will affect whatever is selected. So you see, we'll change this back to hairline. It will make it very thin. Another thing that's a little bit different is it's not possible to put text anywhere outside of a cell. You can only put text in a cell. So if I click in a cell, I can type in a word. If I try and do that outside a cell, it will not let me. So it's not possible to put text outside of a cell. If you want to use text in an area outside a cell, you actually have to draw a cell, then get your text tool, and type in the words you want to put in. Any adjustments into the text should be done up in the font menu. So 
but we can make the text bigger, make it bold. It's bigger than the box, actually, so it's not going to show it. Now we can take the lines away from that hot truck if we wish on the cell by going back up to the line thickness and selecting none. So now you can see how you can make it appear to have text outside a cell, and well, really it is inside a cell. If I click on that, you can see the little selector on the bottom here. Other preferences that are available up on top, cell corners. If I click on this cell and select it, you can see there are different cell corners available. Square turns it to a square, and large basically makes it more rounded. The one that we, the default setting is that we most commonly use is small. So we talked about line thickness, cell corners, other commands that are up under the preference menu. We've got ruler grid gap. These are settings. Would you like your ruler to be set in inches or would you like it in centimeters? Some of the Europeans prefer centimeters. In the US, we generally use inches. The grid spacing on this now, there's an electronic grid that's on the screen that allows you to get things aligned properly. It's set at eighth inch increments. You can set that for as wide as you want. We could set it for 0.5, which would be a half inch. If you do set it for a half inch, you'll notice that the objects on the screen will jump at half inch increments. Typically, 0.125 and eighth of an inch is about right. We also have gaps for sprayed buttons. How far apart do you want the buttons to be when they're sprayed? You could put zero in there, for example, which would make them right next to each other and make the squares touching each other. Other settings under the preferences menu, board size. How big would you like your display to be? A standard display on an 8.5 by 11 page is going to vary a little bit from printer page to printer page. Our current printer page is 8 by 10.77. This is for the printer that's selected. Yours may be different than that. The maximum size page that's allowed is 24 by 21.5 with this printer. Basically, that amounts to you can have three pages side by side and two pages vertical. So it would be like six, eight and a half by 11 pages that can be put together. That's the largest that the program allows. If you wanted to make a two page wide overlay, we can set the width, for example, by typing in 16. And if we leave the height at 10.77, that would be two eight and a half by 11 pages side by side. If you want to do it in landscape mode, if you just click on swap, that will change the width and the height. Just reverse them. Let's go ahead and click OK here, and you can see we'll go to View and look at Reduce to Fit. And you can see over here is the 8.5 by 11 page. That's your page divider point. So if we had two overlays on here, this would be one page. The second page would be over here. We'll go back to board size and make this the normal size. Now we'll make it 8 by 10.77. Other commands we haven't talked about. Under view, that electronic grid we talked about, if you wish to show it, you can select show grid and you'll see it appear on the screen. It takes a while to draw it. It's not real practical. It's, it sometimes can help when you're drawing the initial cell that you want to draw, but not, not something you'll use much. I'll deselect that. Now there's also a snap to grid command. Snap to grid means when you move things around on the screen, it will move in eighth inch increments if the grid is set an eighth of an inch. If you deselect that by taking the check away, then you'll be able to move things very smoothly. They, there will be no increments at all. You can move it wherever you want to. We also have the send to back command, which we saw before, and show rulers. We'll go back to normal size. And we'll go into the, we're kind of done with a tour of the uh, draw portion of Board Maker. We're going to go back into the picture finding tour, the picture getter. We'll click on him. And I'm going to type the word adjective. And it is possible, we want to take the fire out of adjective. And it's possible to draw a marquee around by holding the mouse button down and drawing a marquee around the picture for fire. And now we'll flip into the draw mode. Now what will happen when we copy this, it will copy only the portion of the picture that's inside the marquee. So this is one way to, to separate a, a symbol to break it down. We'll click on draw. And now we'll click on our cell. And auto resize is on. So I'm going to deselect this picture here. And I'm going to turn auto resize off. And we'll go up to, we've got to select the cell. 
We'll have to edit and do a paste. Now it'll come in on the smaller size. You can actually change the size of fire in here and work with it as a separate object. We'll go back to the